So before moving on to post-polio syndrome, so it'd be useful to do a little recap on poliomyelitis. Um, so fortunately, this condition has almost been highly eradicated now, uh, thanks to uh, vaccines introduced in the 50s. But it's caused by the polyvirus, which is an RNA virus within the enterovirus species. There are three wild types, of which only wild type one is still in existence. And there's also, unfortunately, a circulating vaccine-associated polyvirus. It's highly infectious and spread by the fecal oral route. In the vast majority of cases, it causes uh, an asymptomatic infection with a febrile illness in the remainder. And just around a percent um, causes paralytic polymyelitis. The majority of these cases are of a spinal subtype. And these occur uh, where there's viral invasion and damage to the anterior gray horn. Uh, less commonly, you can get vulvar and vulvar spinal presentations. Uh, and this picture is of an iron lung, which was uh, negative pressure ventilation used for uh, patients who got respiratory muscle weakness with this. So post polio syndrome itself, um, it occurs usually many years after recovery from polymyelitis, thought to occur in about 25 to 40% of polio survivors, and estimated to be about 100,000 cases in the UK. Uh, it's characterized mainly by progressive weakness, uh, muscle wasting, pain, and fatigue. Uh, the diagnosis is clinical. Uh, there's what's known as the March of Dimes uh, right here for it. Uh, and this includes um, things such as evidence of previous paralytic polio um, with the recovery, uh, new symptoms lasting at least one year, and exclusion of other possible causes of weakness. It can involve previously uh, what the patient might have considered to be unaffected areas. Uh, so the patient might say that when they had paralytic polio in the past, they had some weakness in the right leg that recovered, and they may come and present with their right and left leg weak, and that might have been due to previously subclinical involvement um, to the left side. And although the pathophysiology is not known sort of exactly, it's thought to occur due to decompensation of the overburdened remaining motor neurons following the, uh, the previous paralytic polio. Uh, in terms of investigation findings, they're non-specific. Um, but you can find evidence of chronic innovation on EMG um, and muscle fiber type grouping on muscle biopsy. In terms then of management, um, there's no disease modifying treatment um, and it's often slowly progressive in nature. Um, MDT involvement is, is very important, um, making sure to involve different members, orthotics may be useful for dealing with leg length discrepancies, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, um, as well as medical management of uh, things like pain and fatigue. So the main take-home points are that there is still a significant number of polio survivors in the UK today, uh, many of whom will unfortunately be affected by this at some point in their life. Um, it can involve um, previously unaffected areas um, and although there's no uh, effective treatment it's rarely life-threatening um, except maybe for cases where there's uh, severe respiratory muscle weakness with uh, the post polio um, and MDT management is key. <clears throat> That's it.